My Aircrete sucks. It falls apart and it goes flat. I don't know what soap to use. I don't know why it can, can possibly be a building material because it's so soft and it falls apart. And I give up. Okay? Is that you? If that's you, I would encourage you, first of all, don't give up. Um, there's a lot of bad information on the internet and there's a lot of not understanding what's going on with your aircrete. And so I'm going to reveal to you the secrets and some troubleshooting ideas. If you've been trying to make test batches of aircrete and discover is this aircrete really as great as they say, I think it has the potential to be amazing, but every time I make a test batch it goes flat, it deflates, it falls apart. So know that you've done something wrong, you don't yet understand the process. You see, Aircrete is a very wonderful workable material. In fact, here's a picture of my truck. There was a hole after a great deal of rain and I just threw a bunch of leftover Aircrete scraps and blocks into this hole in our driveway. And for a week straight, we've been driving two vehicles over this two, three plus times a day. And you see how this Aircrete block supports the weight of my truck. And yes, where the tire pulls up on the edges and kind of pulls down and breaks off pieces, the edges of the blocks as you come up onto them are broken into pieces. But the blocks that have weight applied directly and straight down on them without that tensile force is completely intact and supporting the front end of my truck, the motor end, the heavy end. So don't give up on making aircrete. Let me give you these troubleshooting tips. To make aircrete, you have to understand it's a relationship of your foam and its density and wetness to your cement density and wetness. And when I say cement, I actually mean Portland cement. No sand, no other additives. We don't put other things in aircrete, um, at least not to begin with. Once you've successfully made aircrete, then you can experiment with adding reinforcing fibers and other substances. But for now, you've got to get the basic aircrete correct. So, what happens very often is people are making foam and they really don't have any idea. I'm just making foam, I'm shooting foam in the concrete, why is it going flat? Well, the number one thing that happens here is people are making foam that is very wet. And what happens is that extra water that's mixed into that cement causes it to become so liquidy that the bubbles are able to surface. Because you see, it's actually viscosity, the thickness of your cement mixture that the air bubbles become entrained into. And the soap bubble only needs to hold the bubbles long enough that you can make your mix, get it inflated, and pour it out. And after that, it's actually the thickness of your cement that holds the bubble in place. If it's too watery, the bubble's gonna rise. Um, and the, another thing is if you overmix the cement, if you mix it with the wrong implement, um, or you vibrate it too much, sometimes these bubbles will actually merge and form bigger bubbles, and these bigger bubbles can then have the uh, ability to rise through the material or create bigger gaps within the block. So keep that in mind. Your foam density needs to be between 90 and 100 grams per liter. So you need a scale and you need to weigh your foam and you need to use the right foaming agent. There's a lot of soaps out there. I know a lot of people even recommend seventh generation and honestly, even I have difficulty with seventh generation. It, it's not as good of a foaming agent. Um, there's other soaps like Axion, particularly popular in South America. Uh, they work quite well. But sometimes when you're using soaps, you need to add vegetable glycerin to your mix. You know, just just an ounce and it can and be thoroughly mixed in with the soap and then your foaming agent will hold together and work better. Now having said that Drexel or an actual foaming agent is truly truly superior to using soap and for the money you're, you're just not saving much. I mean come on you're gonna build a house don't worry about paying twenty or thirty seven dollars a gallon for Drexel foam just buy the right stuff would be my encouragement to you. Now, even with Drexel, there is glycerin in it, and if you had a bottle that has sat on the shelf for a long time and it's shipped to you and then you set it down, there's glycerin on the top. And you'll pour off the first batch and you'll make this great batch of aircrete, and then the rest of your aircrete is kind of questionable or maybe even sucks. The reason for that is that there's a separation in the Drexel. So when you have Drexel, always 
pour some into another bottle, give a good pharmaceutical shake, give a good mixing to both bottles, pour them back together, maybe even pour them back and forth a couple times, but thoroughly pre-mix your Drexel before adding it to your water um, because that gives you a much more consistent result. There you have it. Those are the main reasons that aircrete fails and the reason a lot of you are having trouble making aircrete. You're just getting too much water in there, uh, you're, you're over mixing it, you're not getting the bubbles thoroughly incorporated, maybe you don't have a flat blade spiral mixer that properly incorporates and entrains the air. And maybe you're trying to use soaps that just really aren't a foaming agent and you don't realize they need some glycerin to make them work. So go out and try that. You know, um, leave some comments below and questions and we can have a discussion and maybe I can help assist you in making your air creep work for you. Also, if you like this kind of information, please click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when more information comes forth. In fact, click the bell so that you receive the notifications to get more useful information like this and participate in the comments below. And also, if you're interested in taking, uh, obtaining a Aircrete video course that goes through every detail that you need for building a dome in a very clear manner that you can follow, then click the first link in the description below and follow that link and buy the Aircrete course. Invest in yourself. Cut out all this wasted time and material because by the time you waste your time and material, honestly, you could just watch the video and know exactly what you need to do. And secondly, having seen a lot of people take it uh, the video course to really cement that knowledge in, there's really nothing that compares with taking an Air Creek workshop. So if that's something that maybe interests you, do take the time to invest in yourself. Click the link below, find out about our workshops. Um, if not from us, I really believe it's very beneficial that you take a workshop from somebody because then you know the ins and outs. And when something's going on like, is this block too soft? Is this block supposed to break? Then you'll know. And in the next video, we'll be discussing that very issue. So have a great day. Thank you for stopping by.